morning. Happy day 11. Oh, whoops. Uh, it is, let's see, almost 6.30 in the morning. We are off on a great big adventure today, but I've just come to drop my stuff in the car and I'm trying to look for a project bag that has a handle on it that will get attached to my purse that will be easier to carry around today than this one that I had my socks in. And I'm not sure if I have any really great options. I left my smallest one that I like to use for socks at home. This one's a maybe just because it has a handle, but with the full leather, it's a little bit heavy. I think I can actually make this one work. It's very lightweight and small, and it has a ribbon loop on it. So I might be able to clip it to, I have little clips on my purse that goes over the shoulder strap. So I think this is gonna be the best one. So we are about to, oh, <laughs> we are about to um, get an Uber or a Lyft or something to take us to our destination. Where we just left you is we were getting on the boat and we were just pulling out of the harbor. But after that, we had to get a little bit creative because you can't actually film and put stuff on YouTube from national parks, but pictures are a-okay. So we have lots of pictures and we figured we'd just share our experience with you. So tell us where we went. Uh, I went to Dry Tortugas National Park. It's 70 miles west of Key West. Yeah. So we, maybe we can put a map, we can show you how yeah. far away it is. And it's close to Cuba. It's like 90 uh, miles from Cuba, from Havana. Yeah. But there's a point in Key West that's also 90 miles, oh. right? Didn't we just go to that? Maybe. Then maybe that's the... They're both 90 miles because it's kind of like... A triangle. This. Yeah. But it is kind of cool. It's like way out there in the ocean. Super, super yeah, there's small. No, there's not a road or anything. Like you have to take a boat or a seaplane. And there's no bathrooms on the island. There, we had to go to the bathroom on our boat, which was totally fine. But it was, I mean, there's like nothing there. I guess a few people live there to manage the space and that's about it. But we learned a lot about it. Um, so we're going to put pictures in as, as we share about it. So, um, as we were coming up, we got lots of pictures going in. It is, I guess the island is kind of like this with like a tail, sort of, right? Would you say that? Yeah, that island is. Yeah. So is it, there more to the dry tortugas? Yeah. 
Oh, they, so gave us a, they gave us a whole tour, so or the oh. whole thing. Um, <laughs> so I think they said ninety five percent of Dry Tortugas National Park is under the water. Mm. Only five percent is up. There's seven or eight islands oh. that make up Dry Tortugas. Was that the thing they kept saying that there was like that many, and then they discovered more, or like more have been recovered, or something? Uh, I think some have like disappeared, and some have come given like hurricanes, mm. like blowing stuff up and and everything. Yeah. But the main island, um, there's an old... Uh, a fort. Yeah, a fort. Like an actual fortress for the Navy. Yeah. And so it's, it's, I think it's hexagonal. But it was really cool. And it's all made of bricks. And one of the first things, once we got there and docked, um, we like walked around on our own for just maybe 20 minutes. And then we went on a guided tour with one of the people from the boat. Um, their name was Asa and they were awesome. And we learned all sorts of cool things. All, yeah. What was the one thing you, you were like, wanted to double check a fact. What was like oh, your favorite that thing? It's the largest uh, masonry building in the Western hemisphere. There were 16 Six, million bricks used. 16 million bricks? Yeah, I think so. Does that not seem right? That's a lot of bricks. That's a lot. <laughs> Especially to come all the way out there. And this was in like the 1800s that this happened. Um, there's also a moat all the way around it, which I thought was really super cool. So you walk in and it's like almost like foresty on the inside. It kind of looked to me like uh, what? It's okay. Oh, I have the pictures here that I took earlier too. Um, it almost looked like The Last of Us when they're in that ruined, I don't know what it was. It was like ruined and like all like grown over and grassy. This was not obviously quite like that, but it kind of reminded me of that. And then you could walk not quite the whole way around because there was like other building or other rooms in construction that had been built in. But there was, I think, two layers and then like a top layer that was grassy. And we got to go on all of them, yeah, which was, was so cool. It was 16 cool. million bricks. Okay, 16 million. Oh, first thing Ken had to do, of course. Oh, I had to go get my um, a pen so I could do my Junior Ranger booklet. Yes, so we went by the Visitor Center. And then uh, we just started getting a tour around. And we won't bore you with all the details, but I do think it was pretty cool. Yeah, we learned some cool things. Like the, the cannon on top could shoot, what was like a 400-pound cannonball three miles? Yeah, something crazy like that. And it was, I don't know, it was just interesting to, to walk around. And there's that cool thing that I think you, you have a picture of that they would like, for the normal cannons, they would take like a cannonball and heat it up really hot. Oh, yes, yeah. And use like tongs to put it into the cannon and then they would shoot it and it would like skip over the water towards a boat and hopefully hit its hole. Mm -hmm. And the fort is called Fort Jefferson. I forgot about that. It was also um, designed to like withstand attack for a year. Yeah, yeah. And it never got used. They would just like had it ready and then it kind of I think they were saying like the not technology, that's not the right word. The like advancements in, in weaponry and stuff like out was growing faster than they were building the fort. Like the development of artillery. The development of artillery, yeah. But it was still really cool. And the, one of the cool things um that oh, I feel like this is important. This is not there was really difficult terrain everywhere. We climbed up lots of stairs. This was not a very accessible place to go to. Um, so just putting that out there, that we also had a two hour, two and a half hour boat ride there and back, um, which was, people did have small kids on. I'm, I was kind of surprised, like people had small babies on because um, it was like bumpy and uncomfortable for us at times. So just in case you're thinking about doing it, we thought it was really fun, but there's definitely some things you might want to look into. But the stairs were really interesting because we had to go up the stairs. Basically, everyone had to kind of go against the wall because that was the only part of the step that was wide enough for your whole foot to fit on. It, the step kind of narrowed. They were spiraling staircases and the... Um, tour guide said that was by design because they didn't want people to be able to just rush up the stairs they kind of wanted to force like if an enemy was invading or whatever they would have to do like one person at a time up the stairs and they somehow did it where it would be harder to like shoot your gun or something like that i don't know it was very interesting because i think it was if you're, you're right-handed and you're going up the stairs it's gonna be harder to, to the twist right, to the yeah. left yeah that was super interesting the view from the top was really really cool that was a lot of fun and we could walk around it like pretty much the entire way around on top like it's like 
way up. Yeah. The water is also so blue. It was so pretty. And so after we did our tour, they had lunch for us. It was nothing super exciting. Jersey Mike's subs. Like <laughs> catered Jersey Mike's subs. But Jersey Mike's, when you get it there, it tastes so much better. Yeah, it's like a catered <laughs> But it was fine. Yeah. yeah. And so we kind of rested inside the boat with a little air conditioning. And then we went and we got our snorkel gear. And we went snorkeling for like 30 minutes. The water was pretty cold. It was. But we did see some cool things. We don't. We didn't take any pictures underwater. Maybe one day we'll have. Yeah, I thought about bringing the GoPro, but I didn't have anything. Like, I, I want to get like the float stick to go with it in case I dropped it. That was yeah. That would have been bad. Yeah, we saw a barracuda. We saw two different schools of fish, like some that were really tiny and some that were kind of big. Yeah. That was super cool too. Yeah, there was a bunch of cool stuff. Um, and I had never been snorkeling before, so at first I was really worried that I wasn't going to be able to make it more than five minutes because I was just treading water, which is exhausting and then i figured out how to float on my stomach and look around and i didn't want to get my hair wet but then i did and that's why it looks like this because it's really salty and i don't know if i should brush it out and entangle it or just leave it until i can have the chance to wash it again because we're not going to get the chance to shower till tomorrow night <laughs> yeah um no it, it was cool um it's also the uh the third biggest coral reef in the world oh yeah that's right and then exciting news at the end, Kent got his junior ranger badge. Yep, finished my junior ranger badge. And then uh, we headed headed back and got a got a beer on the way back. And that's where the video footage is going to pick back up. But before we send it back to there, anything else? No. I mean, yeah, but it'd be It'd be too historical. It'd be too much. It's not a historical uh, YouTube channel. It was very, very cool though. It I mean was it, very it's cool. it's a two and a half hour boat ride there and back it's like a whole day mm -hmm. but it's, it's very cool it's one of the national parks i didn't think we'd get to i'm really happy it lined up we were able to oh i know what we forgot to share at the end oh on the boat ride back they had comment cards that you could fill out and then they were going to draw one of them for somebody to win another trip back because it's a it's kind of expensive i mean it was a couple hundred dollars yeah and so um i was the winner <laughs> of that do i think i'm ever going to get back to there before the thing Next expires? Year. Probably not, but I was very excited to win anyway. in the van reunited now our original plan was to drive most of the way if not all of the way back to orlando tonight it's about a six hour drive and we ended our tour around 5 30 so we thought maybe we'll do that well that is not what happened as you saw we already did some other things um and now we are uh Kent just went inside to pick up our food at a restaurant that we ordered from in it's not we're not in key west anymore but we're in like the next key um but what changed our plans is that we are going to be meeting some Love and Stitches members tomorrow at a yarn store. And it is like between halfway between Orlando and where we are now. So it just didn't make sense to go all the way back up to Orlando and then try to figure out another time to drive 
three hours down. Um, so we just decided we'll kind of delay going back a little bit, uh, sleep in the van tonight. That was kind of our backup plan anyway to sleep in the van if we didn't want to drive six hours back to Orlando tonight. So that's what we're doing tomorrow. So anyway, we're just kind of slowing down everything. Got our food? Yeah. And we have one more key have, lime pie. Why we have four little boxes in here. Uh, because maybe bread or something. Yeah, I'm gonna open this and look. What is this? Yeah, I don't know. Okay, I'm gonna show the advents real quick and then we can show what we're eating tonight because I'm excited. We got- Oh, you get a side salad, I guess, with these? Guess okay. so. We got to squeeze in one more Key West meal. So I'm just gonna show the advents and then we'll eat. Mine does look good. I got lobster, mac, and cheese. That is looking tasty. Mm. And Kent got fish and chips. And of course we have a key lime pie to try later. So tonight we're back at our favorite truck stop that we stopped at on the way down that we said was a little bit, we're a little unsure of, but they were so nice last time and they're so nice to us today. So we're just getting everything ready for bed and we thought we would show you how we put the bed down every single night. So first we have to get everything that's back here kind of out of the way, except we can leave some stuff on the floor. So I'm probably gonna leave all of these advents down here tonight. Now that we got some of that stuff situated, we have to move all of our bedding out of the way to then make room to put the bed down. So we've got our two pillows that have double pillowcases on them to keep them clean during the day. We have my blanket back here is Kent's blanket. And then we have our two tables that during the day we'll have like they swivel around, but at night they actually become part of our bed. So we just have to take off uh, the two parts to it. Here and here, here and there. Normally I'm not sitting right here when I'm doing it, but I can just put them underneath the bed. And this is really cool. These actually slide in to here, like so. And then these seats come down like that. Now we need to switch because Kent's got to do something in the back. Hi there. Hello. I have very little space. Okay, well, I'll help you out. We have to get our two mattress toppers that make our bed much comfier. Oh gosh. <laughs> I got it. There's one. One. And two. Thank you. Now that our mattress toppers are here, I have a little switch right here that brings down the rest of the bed. Actually, Kent, you might want to hold that back here so everyone can see it better. Can you see it? Yep. Brings it down. Now we have a nice queen size bed and the rest of this, you can just watch me, we can speed it up. I'm just gonna get everything laid out nicely. Okay, so last important piece here is not really part of the bed but it is 
privacy. Obviously, these windows back here are not covered, but our van came with these and they are very handy and easy to put up. They just Velcro right on and nobody can see it. And now we're all ready for bed. And I think we're gonna end it here tonight because we have another early day tomorrow. See you tomorrow.